Hello everyone and welcome back to the box office! Last week we talked about how Deadpool and Wolverine became the highest grossing R-rated film of all time and Deadpool and Wolverine is in the news again this week in the box office but for a different reason. So, without further ado, let's dive into the numbers for the weekend of August 23rd to the 25th of 2024. Coming in number one, reclaiming the number one spot this week was Deadpool and Wolverine making $18.3 million in its fifth week. Uh, Alien Romulus, which opened to a, just north of $40 million last week, took a 61% drop, which is more than you'd want your opening movie to have, although horror movies do tend to have bigger drops in the second weekend. But alas, it came in with $16.3 million in week two. It Ends With Us comes in third in its third week with $11.6 million. Blink Twice in its opening weekend made $7.3 million. You can also find our review for Blink Twice on the channel and in the description below. And coming in fifth in its first week was The Forge making $6.6 .6 million. Now, for Blink Twice, $7 million is not a crazy bad opening considering the film's budget, which a couple of trades have reported to be about $20 million. Its worldwide total is at $13.9 million. So with good word of mouth, hopefully you can get a good cinema score and it can get to that two and a half times the budget to that magic number that most movies need. Uh, the marketing spend I don't think was that high also, so as long as the film can stay good next week and the week after, it should be on its way to profitability. Uh, it ends with us. Now has $242 million worldwide on a budget of 25. It's now at 9.7 times that budget back. That's crazy. Uh, the funny thing is, if they wanted to make a sequel to this, uh, Justin Baldani, the director of the film, who is currently having some drama with Blake Lively, uh, will likely have to stay involved in the project because from what I understand, his production company owns the rights to the sequel novel, at least the production rights to make a film about it. So we'll see what happens there. But with how well the film's been doing, you know that the executives are talking about making a sequel. Alien Romulus has now has $225 million worldwide on a budget of 80, so it's at 2.8 times its budget. It's already in the profitability range. It's absolutely insane that at one point they were going to put this directly to Hulu. And I still think it was such a huge mistake to put Prey on Hulu. I feel like it could have done really well in theaters. I think the, in hindsight, I think the only good thing that came out of putting Prey on Hulu was everyone saying, why the hell did they put this on Hulu? So, which gave them the wherewithal to put this movie in theaters. So, good for them. It's a trend you're seeing often of horror movies that are supposed to go directly to streaming and then executives remembering to have brains and realize that horror movies tend to do well, typically, especially considering their budgets. Evil Dead Rise is another example. It was supposed to go straight to HBO Max and it ended up doing a killing at the box office comparative to its budget. So hopefully they can continue to learn their lessons. Although I hear a new Stephen King adaptation is going directly to streaming soon, so maybe they didn't. Deadpool and Wolverine is now at $1.21 billion dollars great for that movie. Its budget was $200 million, so it's at 6.1 times its production budget. Marvel has to be pleased with that number, uh, considering it's their only theatrical film that came out this year. And I think we're starting to finally see the MCU back on an upward trend. Some would argue both in quality and box office, but for box office, for sure, that's quite objective. Uh, the Forge didn't open overseas, so its total performance is its domestic total, which is about $6.6 .6 .6 Twisters is now at $347 million worldwide. On a budget of 155, it's at 2.2 almost the 2.5 number and i have a feeling that hopefully it can get there but again with universal putting this on pvod as i mentioned last week such a dumb move i think they're just preventing more box office dollars from happening there uh the re-release of Coraline, which came in fifth place last week only took a 49 percent drop making another five million dollars this week that's just acting like it's a brand new release it's crazy and shows the staying power of that movie and how even in this modern time of film Movies can find their audience over time, and this is proof of that. So great for that film. Let's talk about The Crow. Uh, I haven't seen this film yet, but uh, it has opened. It was its first weekend last weekend, and it opened to, let's see here, uh, $4.6 million, which is not great. It was made on a budget of 50 It's at 0.1 times its production budget. You really hate to see it. And uh, again, I haven't seen the film, so I can't really speak to its quality. All I can say is no matter if a movie is good or bad, you just hate to see these things fail. I hate to see any movie fail, even if it's a movie that I 
didn't think was a good idea or didn't have an interest in seeing. You want to see things do well. So this, this makes me quite sad, and I feel bad for the filmmakers involved. I'm very curious to see what the box office will do next week, considering there aren't really a whole lot of new releases coming out, at least no, like, big marketed wide releases. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this box office stays relatively the same. So it will be interesting to see what happens next week. But before we conclude the episode, I wanted to take a minute and show a special little chart for you guys. With Alien Romulus now in theaters and doing somewhat of a killing, I wanted to go ahead and bring up the total worldwide box offices of all of the Alien films in order from most worldwide to least, and I also have some additional information on them at the bottom. Just figured it'd be a nice kind of look into film history of this franchise and everything they have. Now, if you're new here, I don't like to include adjustments for inflation when I do charts like this, and uh, the brief reason for that is I think if you're going to take into account inflation, you also need to take into account many other aspects that happen throughout film history. For example, in the 70s, it was common for films to basically be playing in theaters for almost up to a year if they were doing decently well, and they would open in different markets at different times. And then you have to look at the average ticket price and the average number of tickets sold. Like, there's so many elements that go to how a movie made its money, but something that will never change is the amount of money it made versus its budget, which is what I kind of like looking at seeing. So that's why I don't really like to do the inflation numbers, but if you love looking at the inflation numbers, please feel free to do the calculations and comment below. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. So diving into the Alien franchise, uh, the most money that one of these films has made worldwide is Prometheus at $402.4 million. Its budget was $125 million, meaning it made 3.2 times that budget back. A uh, nice, nice little profitability there for Prometheus. Uh, Alien Covenant is second place with $238.5 million worldwide. Its budget was $97 million, and it made two and a half times its budget. It got right at that $2.5 uh, which means it most likely broke even for the studio, you know, plus or minus just however much they spent on the marketing. Alien Romulus right now is in third, hence the little asterisks there at $225.2 million worldwide. Obviously, this is going to be passing Alien Covenant any day now to be the second highest grossing movie in the franchise. It may get to that Prometheus number, especially with no major releases coming out next week. But, um, you know, with a 61% drop this time, if it keeps dropping at that rate, there's a chance that it doesn't quite get to Prometheus but it's possible, but it will definitely overtake Alien Covenant, you know, any day now to become the second highest grossing film of the franchise. But regardless, it was made on a budget of $80 million and it is right now at 2.8 times its budget back. Good for Alien Romulus. Uh, coming in fourth in the franchise is the original Alien, making $186 million worldwide, almost 187 on a budget of $10.7 million, which is $17.5 times its budget. And just in case you were wondering, regardless of quality, because this movie is an absolute masterpiece, uh, hey, why'd they make so many of these movies? Look at that profit margin. That is crazy. Uh, Aliens is right behind it, although I think it's fun to point out that domestically Aliens made more, but worldwide the original Alien made a little bit more, hence this chart. But worldwide Aliens made $183.2 million on a budget of 17 making 10.8 times its budget. Again, yet another ridiculous profit margin. But of course, as movie fans know, those aren't the only Alien movies that have ever come out, and uh, here's a fun reminder that these other ones do exist. AVP, Alien vs. Predator, is in sixth place, with $172.5 million worldwide, with a budget of 70, making that 2.5 times its budget that you want to see movies make. Although, you know that they were hoping for a lot higher of a profit margin than that. And another thing... The official marketing title is AVP, Alien vs. Predator, so it's Alien vs. Predator, Alien vs. Predator? Okay. Alien Resurrection is in uh, seventh place. Seven, is that right? Yeah, I hope so. Uh, making $160.7 million worldwide on a budget of 60. It made 2.7 times its budget. Alien 3 is in seventh place, making $158.5 million worldwide. On a budget of 55, it made 2.9 times its budget. And, coming as a shock to no one, in last place, Aliens vs. Predator Requiem made $128 million worldwide, almost $129, on a budget of $40. Still profitability though, baby. 3.2 times that budget back. So there you have it, guys. Uh, Prometheus is still number one. Uh, again, it's possible that Alien Romulus can get there, but it'll be a close battle. I can see it. It's definitely going to overtake Alien Covenant. I could see it finishing somewhere in the three... 
320s, 330s range, but that's just me assuming it has the same decrease in attendance uh, if there's an uptick or if the decreases uh, go a lot slower than they were this last weekend, you know, it could go higher than that. By the way, guys, if there are any other charts that you want to see me do regarding box office, regarding, you know, things that are out, things that used to be out and how they're related, please let me know. I'd love to make them for you and make those videos for you. That will do it on this week's episode of The Box Office. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, comment your predictions for next week. If you're right, I'll shout you out on the show next week. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.